Yeah, man may say thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee thy faith by my works. What he's saying there is, is there are things, there's times that when you come into the house of God, you got to activate something. Brother Kleindis was saying this morning, you got to activate something inside your spirit in order to praise and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Even when I don't feel like it, there comes a time that I got to worship God no matter what. I was reminded in Scripture there was a man that came into the house of God, and he had a withered hand, and he hid that hand from God Almighty. The one that could make everything brand new, he still hid it from God. And I was reminded in Scripture that a lot of times we as people of God, we will come into the presence of God and we will hide things from God. But God Almighty already knows. And when you stand into the presence of God Almighty and He says, stand forth and give me forth that problem. He didn't say, he, he told that man, he said, bring forth that problem right now. Let me take care of it for you. That man could have stood there and he could have sat there and said, no, sir, I ain't got no problem. Everything is fine and hunky-dory in my world. And you know what? That man would have left the same way he came. But can I just tell you, the same master that was there that day is here tonight in the same service that we're sitting in in 2020. There ain't a problem too big. There ain't a problem too small that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords cannot work out in your life. But the problem is, it lies within me. Because if I don't activate the Holy Ghost inside of me, then I'm going to walk right out that same old door the same way I came in. So if I bring forth my problem, you say, hey, you got to sit up here and confess all this. No, what I got to tell you is, just like he said this morning, you need to activate the praise and the worship and the glory to God and say, God, I'm coming into your presence and I'm going to worship you because you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. No matter what faults and failures I come into the house of God with, but I'm still going to praise of you, Lord, because you're worthy, God. You're worthy of all my praise and my worship and glory to God. Let's have church here tonight in Jesus.
it right now and let's sing this chorus again. Hallelujah. Let's sing it from our heart. to a time of prayer brother lee is going to lead us in please let's remember every need that's around us sister lewin's stepmother is very 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 sick tonight we pray strength brother lewin to your family and to her as well it is such a joy to be in the house of the lord there are several needs going to be mentioned here let's bind ourselves together in faith Man, what a great atmosphere is in this place right now. What a great, wonderful presence of the Lord is here right now. Hallelujah. Great to see brother and sister Weed. We honor them and appreciate you being here. Bobby God, we just love you and we're so thankful you're here. Sister Brenda, the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Can somebody give the Lord some praise with me right now? Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise as we take these knees. Praise the Lord, church. Isn't God good to his kids? My God. This is a praying church. God indeed does hear your tender hearts. I don't know who was questioning that, but the Lord wants you to know. We have Sister Christian. Praise God. Strength, strength, or flat out sheer will. <laughs> brother Burns, boy, do I miss my brother. Brother McGee, sir, we'd like to pray with you right now. Sister Heather Nash, Sister Susan Dowden, Shelly Mann's mom, Caffrey Whitehead, Sister Deason. Sister Almalou Dowden, we are going to continue to pray strength and guidance. I got to tell you, what a remarkable recovery that young, young lady 
<laughs> Amazing. God is so good. Rhonda McLaughlin, is that it? Sister Lewing, stepmother. And Sister Arm Brewster and Brother Porter. If there's any other unspoken requests, raise your hands now. We're going to pray. We have a God who is present and is very able to answer whatever your heart throws up at him. I pray right now, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, that you do all that we ask, oh God, for there is nothing in your hands, Lord, that is impossible. I pray, oh God, for your healing touch to be upon these bodies, Lord, to touch these minds, and I pray peace. I pray settledness in their hearts, Lord, strength in their bodies to go where we cannot go, Lord, and to be ha, their God. Be healed in the name of Jesus. She kala she Brother Porter, be healed. Man of God, stand your post. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but stand your post. God is your strength. He is your arm. He is your victor. Man of God, stand your post. <laughs> oh my God. Little Holy Ghost showed up in the house right now. Why don't we give God some praise again? Oh, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe that. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. We were so blessed this morning as well with this outstanding praise team that just did such a marvelous job. And then, of course, the ministry. I've been dear honored student pastor. Did he preach a great message this morning on praise? Absolutely wonderful. And, of course, we're thankful for the overwhelming and wonderful response. Thank you again, dear Principal Teasley and Principal Roberts for doing such a wonderful uh, uh, demonstration of just the kind of things and statements about the kinds of things that we all have great respect for and to every one of our teachers and educators and all of the staff that was represented. We know we missed a few people. We're going to do our best to work real hard to get those plaques to you just as quickly as we can. But, uh, Sister McGee, those plaques were there because of the efforts that you made some time ago. So thank you. Let's give Sister McGee a great appreciation. She's just such a blessing to us all. And, uh, of course, we're looking forward to Roundup Sunday. I don't know if we've got any little slide on Roundup Sunday or not, but there we are. Uh, Dr. Johnson, are you close enough that you could jump up here? You might not be where you Oh, He's way high and lifted up. Hallelujah. We appreciate Dr. Johnson and Brother Lee. Can you give them both a great big hand? They do such a marvelous job. And, uh, of course, I mentioned that they'll have hats for all of the uh, all of the, our children next Sunday morning, and then we'll have the all uh, children's choir, and our dear Kara and Sister Samantha Cepeda are working on that, so please see one of them if you will. And um, along with that, I'm understanding after we do the singing uh, here uh, next Sunday morning, um, we will uh, also, the kids will be headed to the chuck wagon house hallelujah and they're going to have a, a big breakfast and so they're not going to want any lunch they'll all be full of uh, fried chicken and gizzards and and bacon and it's going to be good amen <laughs> no there won't be probably any gizzards but anyway we, it'll, it'll all be good we appreciate very very much the work of our dear honor dr johnson and brother lee and their precious wives, and also, of course, the Dowdens and the many others that work.
with the various aspects of our children's ministry. Now, following that service will be, and I was looking for Brother Gardado, and I don't see him right this second, but um, we'll be having some fellowship, and we'll be mentioning that again and momentarily. Um, of course, the wedding shower for Lakin Ward and, and Paxson guests will be uh, next Sunday at 1 o'clock, if I've got that right. Next Sunday at 1 o'clock, MC Green, and if you can stop by somewhere that afternoon and give them a, give them a hello and a little something to, to let them know you love them. And then uh, we'll have a ministers and directors meeting, uh, and I would hope that all our ministry teams can be represented there at 515 in Cornerstone. That uh, I think we've got a slide for that or should be there somewhere, but that will be in Cornerstone at 515 uh, Sunday afternoon. And um, uh, we'll look forward to, to you being a part of that if you can. I don't know whether we'll get that slide or not. Maybe we won't, but uh, um, please, if you can. There we go. Thank you. And then, uh, of course, on the 11th, in fact, on the 11th, dear honored student pastor, why don't you come talk to us a little bit about that? And we'll make him welcome right now and just give us a little, a little rundown of what, that, what that's going to be. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, on the 11th, we will be uh, raising money for Sheaves for Christ. Uh, we will be there in the fellowship hall uh, immediately after PM service, and we're looking forward to that. And we also, I don't know if we have that picture of Ashton praying at the flagpole or not, but we just want to honor our great young man, Ashton. Can we give all of our students a big hand clap, stepping up, praying and worshiping with one another? Amen. We believe in the next generation. Uh, October 25th, evangelist Ronnie Lacombe will be with us on Amen. He's an incredible minister of the gospel. He will be with us 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. I believe there's a slide for that. And on October the 25th as well, he'll be with us with our all-church leadership meeting. Uh, I believe that will be in the fellowship hall at 5 p.m., I believe so. And special thanks to all of those that helped come yesterday for the all-church workday. Many, many people showed up. Brother Boyer, uh, of course, Sister Whitehead and Brother Whitehead, Sister Johnson, uh, Sister Cox, our great buddy came, uh, Sean, uh, Buddy came as well, and Chris. And can we give all of those a hand clap that came and helped out? Amen. Why don't you look over at your neighbor and say, we're going to have some church tonight as Brother Lee comes. Amen. Looking around, I see Sister Lyser back there, and I can't tell you how thrilled we are that she's able to be here again tonight. Amen, amen. And the Haman's granddaughter that I knew I was going to do a better job because I couldn't do any worse job than I did the Wednesday night. But Kaylee, we are happy you're here. Funny that I would remember her name in as much as we have a little connection on that part of it. But we're thrilled to see her and can you all give a great warm loved welcome to our precious sister Hagen aren't we happy to see her tonight we just thank you sister Hagen so so much and uh, it's just a joy and then right back there in her green mask hallelujah that's a that's a cute mask I'll wrestle you for that sister Ford when we're over could you give sister Ford a big welcome we Love our dear elders. It means so much to all of us. Praise God. Come on, Brother Lee, and lead us in this time of worship. All righty, church. We'll step into some uh, tithe and offering. If we could all please stand. You know, I say it all the time, but it's amazing to see what happens when a bunch of people come together that are committed to a cause. We saw it happen during the hurricane season. I could only imagine what would happen when a group of people who worship the one true God come together, what we could possibly accomplish. It's just amazing. Let's pray for this offering. We got the baskets up front as you feel led. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your presence, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your great favor, for allowing the arms of this church, Lord, to reach 
this wonderful community. We thank you, Lord, for blessing these families, Lord, for blessing these children, oh God, with parents who are dedicated to you. We thank you, Father. We ask you now, Lord, to bless the gift and the giver abundantly in this season. In the name of Jesus, amen. Page 307. Oh. 
I'm so thankful for God's presence, the way it came in this place just at the start of the service. There is nothing like His presence. I was thinking, these ladies were so kind, they didn't tell me y'all already sang this song last week. But I have been feeling it on my heart all week long. And uh, we used to take, when we would take our youth on a mission trip, uh, when we were with the youth division, uh, one of the neatest things is there was always a language barrier. And it just seemed like we found out one word is a universal word, and that's hallelujah. So if we couldn't speak their language, we would just bow our head and say hallelujah. That word is a universal language because that is the highest praise you can give God. All you have to say is hallelujah. And you would be amazed at how it just lifts your spirit. Give him the highest praise is what we are instructed in the Bible to do. So we're going to sing tonight hallelujah. My hallelujahs belong to you. It is the highest praise. Worship with us as we sing.
There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. <laughs> There's no wall you won't kick change, down, change, light change, you won't kick down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb into this house tonight There's right no here. He's looking for somebody down. tonight. He's in this down. place Coming right after me.
shout of praise together. Can we give thanks to the Lord? Can we give thanks to the Lord? Can we give thanks to the Lord? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Praise God. He's no stranger to us. He is one of the finest men you'll want to be around. You got another song? You don't have another song? That was so good. We'll take three or four more. We love him. He's a tremendous preacher of the gospel. And it's a great honor and privilege as a church to have the likes of a man named Jeremiah Kleindienst and his precious wife. Would you welcome him right now as he preaches the word of the Lord? Come on, let's give that to the Lord, can we? Why don't you praise him for what he's done for you? Praise him because of who he is. Praise him because of his mercy. Praise him because of his glory. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. You know, I was thinking while we were worshiping in the book of Ecclesiastes, it talks about for everything there is a season. A season to sow, a season to reap. Season to plant, season to build, so forth, so forth, and so forth. But let me tell you, throughout the book of Ecclesiastes, there's one thing that there is never a season for, and that is to never quit. There's never a season to quit. I don't know what you're going through right now, but don't quit. God's going to do something in your life. God's going to help you. God's going to repair that which is broken. There's never a season to quit. Amen. If you would, go with me very quickly in your Bibles to the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 24 through 25. Amen. The book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 24 through 25. And as you're turning there, of course, I'd like to pay honor to our pastor, amen, and to Sister Christian. Can we give them a hand clap of honor and appreciation for everything that they do for us? Amen. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, we're going to have some church tonight. Amen. It's all right. We're going to get a little comfortable, but I believe that God's going to minister to you. Amen. Daniel chapter 3, verses 24 through 25, the Bible says this. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound to the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Verse 25, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. I want to preach to you for a little while on this topic this morning, this evening. Get ready for a visitation in your situation. Get ready for a visitation in your situation. God's about to move right there in the midst of your situation. Why don't you raise your hands this evening and let's pray. Father, I pray your presence comes and begins to move right in the middle of the problem. Begins to move right in the middle of the dilemma. Begins to move right in the middle of the situation. God, touch our hearts, touch our minds, and touch our spirits, we pray. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Get ready for a visitation in your situation. Amen. From the very beginning of the Bible, you will see that God delivers. How many know here from the very beginning that God is a deliverer? Amen. We're all byproducts of what God did for us at the cross. He, he is a deliverer. The, the Exodus account, which is found in the second book of the Bible, highlights this great quality of God. The Israelites, God's people, had been in slavery for many years. They were mistreated. They were mocked. And they were beaten. But God said in Exodus chapter 3, 7 through 8, I have seen the affliction of my people, and I have heard their cries. God called a man by the name of Moses to rise and lead his people out of the bondage of Egypt, out of the slavery, out of the captivity. The people followed Moses out of Egypt through the Red Sea and into God's special place prepared for them. We often like 
liken this Old Testament story to the New Testament salvation experience. Egypt is a type and shadow of sin in the Bible. Sin will mock you. Sin will beat you. Sin will enslave you. Sin will prison you. Amen. But just as God delivered his people from Egypt, I believe this evening he wants to deliver you. He wants to deliver you from the hold of sin. He wants to deliver you from the hold of addiction. He wants to deliver you from the hold of worry. He wants to deliver you from the hold of the past. Our God still delivers. If you know he's a delivering God, why don't you just praise him tonight? I'm thankful that I know a God that can deliver me out of any situation. See, the Red Sea is a type and shadow of baptism. Everyone say baptism. Second, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 through 2 says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea and were all baptized under Moses in the cloud and the sea. The Israelites couldn't bypass the water. They had to walk through it. If they wanted to make on the other side, they had to go through the water. We can't bypass the waters of baptism. Acts 2.38 still declares, Then Peter said unto them, Repent be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins if we want to make it to that precious place called heaven we've got to go through the waters of baptism am I preaching to anybody tonight that you're so glad for the burial called baptism you're glad that the old things have become new aren't you glad for baptism See, God used this method of baptism to deliver us from our old natures, our old minds, our old ways. It's the watery grave. Colossians chapter 2 verse 12 says, Buried with him in baptism, in which you are also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And I believe that Moses is a type and shadow of Christ. Just as Moses had a supernatural deliverance at his birth, so did Jesus. Just as Moses gave up his royal position to save his people, so did Jesus. And just as Moses led his people out of slavery, we know Jesus does the same thing also. So I've come to tell you tonight, follow Jesus and you'll find yourself free. Follow him out of the land of problems. Follow him out of the land of bitterness. Follow him out of the land of captivity. Follow him out of the land of addiction. Our God still delivers. But in our text, everyone say in our text, I mean, you won't preach with me a little bit tonight. In our text, we see something unique happen. Let me give you some context. The, the three Hebrew teenagers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, refused to bow to the king's golden idol. Let me just stop here and say I believe I'm preaching to a group of people who refuse to bow to the enemy. We refuse to bow to depression. We refuse to bow to anxiety. We refuse to bow to fear. We refuse to bow to anything but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Why don't you shout, I'm not going to bow only to Jesus. Amen. So these young teenagers refused to bow to the king's golden idol. And so they were sentenced to be burned to death. In fact, the king was so furious that he had the, that he had the heat turned up seven times hotter than normal. The king's officers tied up the three boys and threw them into the hot furnace. In a few minutes, the king came back to check on them, but he got confused. He said, didn't we throw three men here in the furnace, but I see four men loosed and walking in the furnace. See, we know according to scripture that God works in deliverance. He can quickly pull you out of something. He can pull you out of a season. He can pull you out of a situation. He can pull you out of a sin. Amen. Aren't you thankful for God's deliverance power? Amen. But when we see in this setting, God didn't immediately pull the boys out of the furnace. No, he joined them 
in the furnace. The three Hebrew boys experienced a divine visitation in their situation. God joined their struggles. God stepped in their problem and God entered into their fire. What God, when God doesn't immediately deliver you from something, God will choose to dwell with you in that situation. Come on, I believe that God wants to step in your situation. You feel like, preacher, I've been in this struggle in this season a long time. I feel like in prayer, God spoke to me. He said, tell my people, I'm going to step in their situation with them. I'm going to step in their season with them. I'm going to step in their problem with them. Come on, God's about to step in your problem. He's going to be with you right there in the middle of it. The famous Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. God joined in the valley with David. See, there are Sometimes you can't escape the valley. Amen. You can't escape the affliction. You can't escape the furnace. But I want to tell you tonight, it's time to get ready for a visitation in your situation. You're about to encounter God's presence right there in your problem. You're about to meet God's mercy right there in your mistake. You're about to encounter God's creativity right there in your chaos. You say, preacher, God's not delivered me from it yet. I've just come to tell you he told me to say he's going to step there in the middle with you in it. Why don't we give the Lord a hand clap of praise this evening. Come on you're going to encounter God's presence right there in the middle of the problem. We know that God works as our deliverer but there are times that he works as Emmanuel God with us. He'll join with us in the storm. He'll join with us in the heartbreak. He'll join with us in the pandemic. He'll join with us in the disaster. He'll join with us in the furnace. He'll join with us in the fire. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Come on, why don't you shout, God, you're with me. I'm about to experience your power right now in the middle of this problem. Notice with me in our text some powerful remarks. The godless king said, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. See, when you have a divine visitation in your situation, you can walk through some places that others can't. The three Hebrew boys were walking in the fire. Everyone say the fire. We know it's impossible to walk through fire without being burned alive. But when God visits your situation, you can walk through the furnace of fear. You can walk through the furnace of grief. You can walk through the furnace of issues. You can walk through the furnace of loneliness. And your spiritual life still not be burned alive. When God's presence steps in the middle of your season, you can walk through what others can Come on, if you're going through something right now, I believe that God's about to join in the middle of it. He's about to come in agreement with you in it. He's about to step in it. Get ready for a visitation in your situation. Come on, if you're going through something, why don't you raise your hands and say, God, join me in this struggle. God, join me in this problem. God, join me in this dilemma. Come on, I believe God's about to step on the scene. I believe that God's about to enter that battle. I believe God's about to connect with your struggle. The second powerful thing about the story is that in Daniel 3, 27, we see that the three Hebrew boys didn't even smell like smoke when they got out of the furnace. Friend, that tells me you won't look like you won't sound like, you won't smell like what you have been through. 
how do I look put together when life is falling apart? Well, I had a visitation in my situation. Come on, how do I speak hope in hurt? Well, I had a visitation in my situation. How do I smile in a season that I don't understand? I had a visitation in my situation. Come on, I believe tonight God wants to visit you right there in your valley. He wants to visit you right there in your furnace. He wants to visit you right there in your pain. Amen. He might not be delivering you from it right now, but he's going to step right there in the middle of it. He's going to join you in your problem. He's going to connect with you in your difficulty. Come on, am I preaching to anybody? You feel like you've been in a season for far too long. You feel like you've been in this burden far too long. God wants me to tell you, he's going to step right there in the struggle with you. You're about to have a visitation. Come on in your situation. We know that God will never leave us alone. We know that he's a God right there in the middle with us. We know that his presence, come on, would never leave us. But I feel to tell you sometimes it feels like where is God? Where is God in this problem? Where is God in this trouble? Where is God in this sorrow? I just want to minister to somebody's broken heart, somebody's broken spirit, somebody's broken emotions. God wants me to tell you a very simplistic word. He wants me to tell you he's going to step in the struggle with you. Get ready for a visitation in your devastation. Get ready for a visitation in your situation. Get ready for a visitation. Come on in your deepest, darkest dilemma. We serve a God that can step right in. That's the power of the incarnation. That's why we celebrate and talk about Christmas. Christ was born in a manger. He was born in a deep, dark mess. He came in a dirty place. He robed himself in flesh. How many are thankful for the oneness of God revelation? Oh, come on. We're not serving three gods. We're serving one that can work in different manifestations. He can work in different realms. He's one God. We've got one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Even the devils believe and tremble that there's one God. Come on, sometimes it's good to just hang around that topic a little bit. This is a oneness church. We believe that God is one. How many tonight believe that God is one? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Come on, there is one Lord. That's why we talk about his incarnation. Amen. He robed himself in flesh. He saw the plight, amen, of humanity. He saw what was happening. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to join their struggle. I'm going to step in their mess. So I'm going to robe myself in flesh. I'm going to be born in a manger. And then eventually I'm going to carry an old rugged cross. I'm going to die on that cross so they can be free. Christ said, I'm going to step in right there and change it all. I just want to tell you, when you have a visitation in your situation, everything will change. When God steps in the middle, everything changes. Come on, I feel to tell you sometime this week, you're going to feel something different. You're going to feel a presence you've not felt in a long time. You're going to feel a word in your spirit that you've not heard in a long time. I want to preach to somebody. God is about to step in your situation. Let's stand, can we? We've got to get ready for a visitation. We've got to prepare ourselves for Christ to show up. Let me tell you, we know a God that can show up at the right time. Amen. Some of you may be questioning I don't know if I can handle this situation any longer. Hey, man, I, my back has been against the wall just a, too, just, a bit, just a little bit too long. But I just want to minister to you tonight. God said, I'm going to step in with them. Hey, man, they're going to have a visitation. I'm going to encounter. They're going to have an experience. Sometimes you have a revelation in the furnace that you can't receive on the mountaintop. Amen. Sometimes you can encounter God's presence that you, you can't encounter on the high lofty tables. Amen. You experience in the deep 
dark places of life, the low moments, the hard moments, the dark moments, that's when you can know, come on, that this is the Son of God. This is God robed in flesh. Maybe if you want a revelation of God's identity, sometimes there has to be an impossibility. There has to be a situation. But in that situation, you'll learn there is a Savior. You'll learn there is a King. You'll learn there is a Lord. You're going to have a visitation in your situation. Amen. I'm going to conclude with this. I believe, amen, through this situation you're going through right now, when God steps in months later, fast forward to the future, you're going to be able to take a step back and say, when God stepped in that situation, that became one of my greatest and biggest testimonies that I can witness to this world. I feel tonight that testimonies can be born. Amen. I believe tonight that when God steps in your mess, everything can change. Why don't you raise your hands tonight and if you feel comfortable, you can come to the front. But I believe that God wants to step in your situation. Come on, he wants to step in your problem. He wants to step in your struggle. He wants to step in your season. I'm not going to leave him alone. I'm going to join him in the struggle. Amen. If you feel comfortable, why don't you come to the front? We can have a moment of prayer tonight. Whatever you're going through, he wants to visit you in the valley. That's right. Why don't you just close your eyes for a moment? Lord, we pray for every broken soul. We pray for every wounded heart. God, we pray right now for every heavy heart. Minister to them. Let them know you're going to visit them right there in the middle of their furnace. That's right. If you feel comfortable, just lay your hand on someone and pray with them right now. Let them know they're not alone in the valley. They're going to have a visitation right there in the middle of it. And the adversary says, give me just hold on. Our Lord will show up. What an outstanding message. And he will take you through the fire. I remember, I remember an old song that, that just said, I know God is trouble in the wall. I know. My faith is bubbling over. My no God is trouble in the wall. Come on, Brother Hill. Step in. I know God is yes, he is. My faith is bubbling over. I know God is troubling the wall. Well, well. Don't you think it's time to step on in? Come on, Ben, bite him right now. Somebody put it like this. Set, set, Ben. Step in. Step in. Step in. Just step in. Step in. Lord, a shout of praise with me right now. Praise God. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him with a sultry and harp. What a marvelous message this morning. Woo, my Lord. Step in. Oh, he's got the power. Thank you, Brother Lee. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah, one more time.
time. He's got the power. Oh, ever sickness. He's got the power. Got the power over every weakness. He's got the power over every sickness. He's got, got the, the power, power over every darkness. Don't you think it's time to step on? All right. Me? Let's take this week in the name of the Lord. What do you say? Let's take every step this week and let's say, God, when I take the next step, I'm stepping in. I'm stepping into your goodness. I know you're going to step into this situation with me. Whatever I'm facing, you're going to leave me. You'll never forsake me. You're going to go with me always. So I'm going to keep walking by faith. I'm going to keep trusting in the Lord, not by sight, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Come on, somebody. Let's step on in. Let's step in this week. Step into faith. Step into courage. Step into that opportunity to witness. Step into the good things of God. I love you in Jesus' name. Get around to this dear honored evangelist, our good student pastor. We love him so much. Give him a little hello tonight. Thank you for this. This wonderful worship team. I got a little bass going back there. Hey, the drummer man is a playing. Hallelujah. Get around to brother and sister Weed. Tell them you're happy that they're here tonight. Got some guests all over the house. I love you, church. Be back Wednesday night, Sister Brinkley. I love you too, Sister Brinkley. God bless all of you. Praise God. Great to see you tonight. of the